It's classic race day here at Levels, just outside of Timaru. A chance for these race cars of yesteryear to make a bit of noise. But it's a day South Canterbury is celebrating a car with its own particular history here, the Valiant Charger. A car that changed racing in New Zealand and made a few legends out of a few South Canterbury locals. It's the 40th anniversary of the Valiant Charger in New Zealand and the celebration is being held here at Levels Raceway. And although most of these cars are far too valuable ever to race again, that doesn't stop them from doing a bit of a parade lap for us. Leading the pack in his red number 51 Charger is Jim Little, who has raced these Aussie muscle cars for almost 40 years. Jim Little has proven himself to be the most successful Charger driver ever to come out of Australasia with seven production saloon titles to his name, one between 1972 and 1984. However, stuck out there on the infield, clearly today's not his lucky day. When he's not at the track, you'll find Jim here, in his shed where he builds some of the fastest Charger engines in New Zealand. We popped in for a wee nosy and to ask why he has stuck with the Chargers for so long. <laughs> Poverty. <laughs> Couldn't afford to do anything else. Um, because they aren't a dear car to run, they're a very cheap car to go motor racing and as we all know motor racing is quite expensive. Uh, well, it, it's as expensive as you want to make it and I don't believe it should cost as much money as what some people are spending and the Chargers are a cheap car to run. Of course it keeps it cheap when you are your own mechanic and Jim's engine creations are certainly nice to look at, but the sound is something else. The sound of these 265s on full song is nothing short of spine tingling. But Jim's Red Charger isn't the one you'll see in the newspapers and magazines when Jim was dominating the South Island production saloons. It was this car, Jim's yellow E49, the car that won five South Island championships in a row. And lucky for us, we don't have to go all that far to find it. I can't understand how you'd get a bit blasé about a car like this if you'd seen it every day for 30 years, but for me this is just spectacular. This is the car that won the Southern 200 at Ruapuna in 1992 taking it to the late model Commodores and Falcons of the era. Jim tells me it's just part of the background, but uh, for me, seeing this in the flesh, it's absolutely magic. We weren't the quickest car there, by any means, but we were still strong at the end, and that's what won the race. On paper, it didn't look to be competitive. Yeah, we, we won it, so. Being the oldest car in the race yeah, by 20 years which is well past its use-by date, but just shows you there's life in the old dogs yet. <laughs> but this isn't Jim's first Charger, there's one more car, a car that he bought off racing legend Leo Leonard, the car that started it all. Jim's number seven Charger, a car that would become a familiar sight at the front of the grid. Jim would go on to win the 1972 production saloon series. This shows Jim at his home circuit, Levels Raceway where his charger was a cut above the rest of the field. Though all Jim has left of it are bits and pieces. You reckon that's the first one that it had on it? Um, yes, it would have been. This car kicked off Jim's run of success in the Chargers, but was first owned by Timaru driver Leo Leonard, who earned the nickname Mr Charger. This car was one of the first high-performance E38 models to make it to New Zealand. Well, the E38 that, um, that I ran and uh, is here today, is um, that would be of some historical significance. That was one of the three of the first Chargers that Todd's brought into the country. And uh, my one, although we weren't very successful at the time, because we didn't really know what to do with them to bring them up to speed, but they still looked and sounded magnificent. 
Yes, that's right, it still survives today, somewhat against the odds given its crash history. When Leo decided to sell the car in 1972, Jim jumped at the chance, putting his race mini up for sale to fund the purchase. Charger, E38, triple Webers, close ratio gearbox, 16 to 1 steering ratio, 36 gallon fuel tank. God, I've got to have one of these. Purpose built race car you can drive on the road. I've got to own one of these. And so I had a yarn with Leo and he said, well, you know, sell your money and then come and see me and we'll, you know, we'll go from there. So, so that's the way it happened, yeah. I <laughs> But like any race car, it's had a tough life. Legend has it that it's the only New Zealand assembled RT Charger in the world, if only for the fact that every panel on this car has been replaced at least three times. It had 17 uh, front guards replaced on it, and um, at a cost of $13 in those days, it wasn't the end of the world, but uh, they're about $300 today, so it's, uh, it's a vast difference. But Jim says it's no surprise that it was saved from the scrap heap. We knew our way around them and the, the parts were you know, uh, not too, too expensive. I mean, it's, it made more sense to fix it. Because even then, you know, where do you find another one? Yeah, they just weren't around on every dealer's yard, you know, so... And with, uh, you know, being an E38, E49, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's, uh, it takes a lot of replacing. Well, I think, I think just it's a piece of iconic New Zealand history as far as charges go. It's probably the most famous one. The most famous one perhaps, but it wasn't until this car that Leo Leonard really started to make his mark. His hot mustard E49 with four-speed gearbox, surely this was the ultimate racing charger. Well it might not look like much, but this is it. Number 211, the car that for a time was described as the fastest charger in the world. This car held the production lap record at every major circuit in New Zealand, and for a time it seemed unstoppable. The car was entered into the 72-73 Castrol GDX series and was instantly more competitive than Leo's old orange E38. When Leo was in this one, um, he was a master and uh, yeah, as Alan Moffat found out when he came, when we pulled something out here, but you know, he was reputed to say that the Kiwis had got the fastest chargers in the world and, and I believe him. Ford Motor Company was famously embarrassed by Leo's success in his new Charger and sent out a GTHO Falcon with drivers Alan Moffat and Jim Richards to deny Leo a series win. But it was not to be. And this is the engine that did it. The 265 that held off the Moffat challenge at both Wigram and Teratonga before he packed it in and decided to go home. By now you would have realised the car is undergoing a fairly serious restoration at the hands of lifelong Charger fan Stan Dorsey, who has owned the car for 30 years. You've heard of nut and bolt restorations, but this, every little thing, will be just as it was during its racing heyday. The attention to detail on this restoration is just staggering. This drive shaft, for example, a part that not many people will really ever see, stands gone to great lengths to get the colours just right. And not only that, but the distance from the end of the drive shaft to the first stripe, and even the distances in between, are exactly as they would have been when this car came out of the factory. I'll be pretty chuffed to get it written up the same as that and have Leo's name on the door. And, uh, and um, he'll probably get to steer it one day too. Leo himself is not so sure. I would, but the, uh, there's no one brave enough to loan me a car. I think they've probably heard of my reputation. But he doesn't think the car should be hidden away, wrapped in cotton wool either. We knew that there was going to be some smart people out there who would put these cars away uh, for days like today, and fortunately, They've bought them out so that people like us and the general public can um, appreciate their historical value.